Hey, Pastor John. Hey, Pastor Avenger. Um, this is so strange. And I really need to ask your forgiveness for not doing this video sooner. But I, I was kind of hesitant. First of all, because you don't know me and this is kind of a crazy thing to do and I know you get crazy people sending you stuff all the time and I uh, really just didn't want to be one of them but the Lord kept hounding me and hounding me and hounding me <laughs> and he said tell him your story and I'm like Lord I don't know this man he's going to think I'm crazy and whatever and the Lord a few months ago said, tell him your story, and kept on saying, tell him your story, tell him your story, tell him your story. And I'm like, okay. Um, I gave up the ghost, and you know, sometimes how you run from God. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's what I did. I'm like, he's not going to want to hear my story. He's not going to want to hear... Uh, my journey um, and the Lord just said tell him tell him tell him so I'm making this video it's long overdue I'm so sorry I guess I kind of have um, some confidence issues and self-esteem issues when it comes to speaking to leadership especially anyway um, Oh my gosh, I can't believe, I can't believe, I forgot to tell you my name and where I'm from. <laughs> um, my name is Rachel Esdale, I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, I was born with a physical disability called tubal palsy um, in 1984. That would make me about 35 this September. Um, and um, I'm not going to tell you my whole story because that's so long and it's not boring, but it's really long and it's really, um, really emotional. But I will tell you my recent testimony. Um, and I would say about 2012, I started my own film company called Emancipation Films, uh, which is just, which is basically a film company that uh, makes inspirational films, whether the, that be Christian or other, that are kind of out of the box. So, when Jesus was on earth, he did things kind of, he, we, see, the problem with the scriptures is we look at Jesus as if he's like this big thing in the sky, and we don't realize that when we're talking about Second Temple Judaism, which is the time where Jesus came, he was a radical. He was such a radical. And um, we look at him as some kind of a some kind of a thing up there which is kind of serious and whatever. So I I've always been interested in film and music and I'm a very artistic person. So in 2012, I, I opened this company with high hopes of um, finally producing films and whatever. Um, it turned out that I didn't know what I was doing. I opened the company, hired a high priced lawyer, and did all kinds of stuff. Um, long story short, it got me in so much debt that I had to end up at the end of 
I think it was 2016, I had to end up filing for bankruptcy because my debt got so much and I couldn't pay it back. And in about 2017, a year later, after I filed for bankruptcy, my bigger bro my oldest brother uh, died uh, from, he had mental health issues, he had diabetes, he had sleep apnea, he had all of that. And he, um, he was, he was living in kind of a home for, uh, the mentally challenged and he um he 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 died on the way to the hospital um because he struggled with all kinds of mental illness issues so he he di didn't want to take an ambulance to the hospital um, so he got into a taxi and on the way to the hospital, he passed away. And um, when, <laughs> oh my gosh, and when he died, it had been three years since I'd seen him. So when I heard because I knew he was sick, but because of my family wanting to protect me and wanting to um, make sure I was okay, they didn't really tell me what was, what was really go like what, how serious his um, condition was, his, his illness was with the sleep, sleep apnea with the diabetes and with everything. And I remember um, going through, through that time and being at his funeral and feeling just so de dead and so alone. Like really alone. I have a loving family and whatever. I have a loving church that I attend. But when you're going through stuff, Sometimes you don't know how to express how you're really feeling, and that's my problem. I can talk to people, but the but the deep issues of my heart. Sometimes I don't know how to express how I'm feeling. So when people would ask me, "Are are you okay?" That must be so tough. I'd be like. Oh yeah, I'm fine. It's tough, but the Lord is getting me through it. But I was really, really kind of uh, dying inside, and and then on top of it, bankruptcy and my brother dying. Um, I went in for. This is the part of my story that I think you can really relate to. Um, I went in for a regular, like, physical, and then my doctor called me about two weeks later and said, I, I want to see you. And, and, like, at that time, and I said, okay. So I went into the doctor thinking that nothing was wrong. And then it turned out at the age of 34, I had been diagnosed with diabetes. And it was just a blow to me because I never thought that a 34 year old woman about 270 pounds at the time could struggle with um, diabetes and when I heard 
you were diagnosed with it, I really wanted to reach out to you then. But as I said, I had, had issues. I, I'm like, he's not going to want to listen to me because, first of all, he doesn't know if I'm crazy. Second of all, um, he doesn't know me. And you have to be careful who you let into your air, air gate and eye gate. So, like, with my brother dying, my bankruptcy, and being diagnosed with diabetes, that, and that, and after that, my aunt died. So, it was one thing after another, after another. And what I learned through that, first of all, is sometimes we, sometimes in the charismatic church, because I've been in the church all my life. I went up, I went to church and we sang hymns and then we did all that stuff. We went to youth groups and we did all that. And I think sometimes um, going to church and doing all that charismatic stuff. I I believe in healing wholeheartedly. I believe that God can heal. I believe that God does heal. I believe that God will heal. But sometimes we're so f focused on getting it away and getting it healed that we don't realize that God, he, he we don't realize that our pain is trying to teach us something. So if I, because I do little sermons on YouTube, I'm not a big preacher like you are. I don't even speak at my church, but the Lord um, in 2011 gave, gave me this platform on YouTube to speak. And if I was titling this, as a sermon, I would call it the master class of pain. Because um, you know Oprah Winfrey personally, so and she has a master class where she tell, she um, talks to people about their story and what they learn. So I would call this the master class of pain and what pain taught me, what diabetes taught me, was basically how to eat better. So I started off, I was 170 pounds, and then now I'm 137, and that was, that was, I got diagnosed in June, and now is like February, so that was like eight months ago. Um, eight, seven months ago um, that I got diagnosed, and the how I was able to do it is I made a decision that all of those. Yeah, all of the white rice and all of the everything that I love to eat was not worth my life. And I, I had to make a conscious choice. And I don't know how they, measure, how they measure sugars over here, but over he, over there, I don't know how much they measure sugars in the U.S., but over here in Canada, you're in between a six and a seven is a regular sugar. And above a seven is a high sugar. My sugar, uh, my glucose level um, for my diabetes was 8.3 starting. And that's diabetic level. And then now, since I lost the weight, since I made the decision to choose life, 
it has gone down to five, which is a regular a regular diabetic level. And I'm just I'm just sending you this as an encouragement to you, as an encouragement to your family to say, you can do this. You can do this. I'm not comparing myself to you, but if I can put it away, anyone can put it away. Because before this, I used to love the sugary drinks, like sugary uh, lemonade. I used to eat three pieces of pizza at a time. And this was like every weekend and I would, I would just eat all that stuff. But when, um, but when diabetes hit me, I had to make the decision to eat better. So even though we could say this is from Satan, uh, the devil's after me, he doesn't want me to advance. It starts with you and making a conscious choice. Your wife can cook wh whatever, like she can cook all of the healthy things that your app does, uh, Pastor Abbott does, and your church could encourage you, I can encourage you, but until you make the decision to choose life, all our encouragement will be for nothing. And I'm saying this to you because my brother was 45 when he died. And I think you're close to that age. I think you may be about 44, 43. So I don't look at you as really a pastor, although you are. I look at you as part of my family and my brother <laughs> and family sticks together and we tell each other the truth. I'm saying this in love because I've been there. Believe me, there are days when I've not been perfect on my diet, believe me. But every day, every day I have to make the conscious choice to choose like the the Lord said, I forget where where He said it. He said, "I've set before you life and death. Choose life." And I was thinking about this and laughing into la laughing laughing to myself. I was thinking of a Rachel paraphrase. My paraphrase would be, "I've set before you over." Oh, I, I've set before you food and family. Choose family. And because your children need you, your church needs you. The Rock needs you. The Relentless Online Community, we need you. You are important to us. I know every, every Sunday at 7, I, I watch. I watch because I believe that God has his hand on your life. I believe that God is doing something wonderful through Relentless Church. I believe that you were, you were called for this season and for this time. But it, you need to believe that. Everyone else can believe it, but you need to believe that you just called, that you are called. And Pastor Ron didn't just pick up the phone and say, oh, I'll just get Pastor John. No, it, it probably took a lot of prayer, a lot of fast, fasting and a lot of faith to call you up from Houston, which is a huge city, like Toronto and to tell you to move to somewhere like Greenville which is a small suburb which is even smaller than a suburb 
you know how much it must have taken for him to to just call you up one day and said would would you consider taking over uh, Re Restoration Church? My wife and I are moving on. So it was no accident that you are pastor of now Relentless Church. He put you there because those people in Greenville need what you have and if you don't stay healthy, they won't have their pastor. And their ch your children need their father. Your children need their daddy. Little four needs his daddy. Little Tutu needs her daddy. And any future children you have need to be born because they have purpose and they have destiny locked up inside them and if you don't take care of yourself you won't be there for them i don't mean to be hard on you pastor john i really don't know you that well but i i'm saying this because i know what it's like to want to give up i know it's what what it's like to wake up and say i wish i wasn't saved today <laughs> Um, because there are some days where I'm like, do I have to be a Christian today? Do I really have to follow Christ? Do I have to deal with the pressure of these people saying what they say? People will say what they say, and, you know, but as long as you know who you are, and God knows who you are, and those closest to you know who you are, that's all that matters, hon. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you soon, bye.